Thank you, Mr. Chair. Today, I'd like to share some results from our CAP project, improving net use efficiency and the soil sustainability in canola production across Canada. As we know, nitrogen is the most important nutrient factor in canola production. Improving nitrogen use efficiency can increase yield, reduce the cost, and the environmental footprint. Nitrogen use efficiency and the maximum economic rate of nitrogen more, however, depends on the hybrid we use, the environment we grow, and the G by E interaction, as well as the nitrogen cycling in the cropping systems. Therefore, Developing agronomic solutions to improve nitrogen use efficiency can benefit canola growth and sustain our soil and the environment. We, we designed this field experiment with the four main objectives. Here I show two of them. First, to assess agronomic and economic responses of canola hybrids to nitrogen fertilizer management. We assessed nitrogen use efficiency, yield response, and crop sustainability. Second, to improve nitrogen use efficiency, crop productivity, and the lodging resistance through the best nitrogen management practices in different cropping systems. To do so, we designed two field experiments conducted at eight locations across Canada over four growing seasons. The first experiment was to assess hybrid response to the timing and the rates of nitrogen application. In this case, we chose two canola hybrids at each location, tested and eight nitrogen rate and the timing combinations. The second experiment was to evaluate canola response to nitrogen and the different cropping systems, including intensive canola, canola weight in a four-year rotation, or intensified uh, production systems. During the canola phase, we also tested the five nitrogen rates. We collect many soil and plant parameters to assess how the crop responds. Here, I just show you some key results. Over the past three years, we found in 18 out of 24 cases, canola yield responded positively to nitrogen application. In some cases, canola yield exceeded the target 52 bushels per acre or even higher. In a normal year, such as 2019, canola hybrids required 170 kilogram, kilogram per hectare of nitrogen as a mirror to achieve an average of 2.7 tons per hectare year. However, heat and the drought stress, such as occurred at Ottawa in 2020 and the majority locations on the prior in 2021, severely affected the canola yield and the response of yield to nitrogen application. This slide shows how the response to the timing of nitrogen application. We assess the yield, mer value, and nitrogen use efficiency. We found in half of the cases, supplied nitrogen application produced the similar tool, but required a smaller mer. Or higher yields with a similar mer. Also, in half of the cases, supplied nitrogen increased nitrogen use efficiency. 
In the second experiment, we found canola falling in weight required a smaller mirror compared to the intensive canola production. The rotational canola produced 13 to 36% higher yield than the continuous canola mount cattle. In both experiments, crop rotation and the split nitrogen strategy increased canola yield and the response of yield to nitrogen application. But this was dramatically affected by heat and the drought stress. Why? Well, we found heat and the drought stress reduced the nitrogen uptake by an average of 18%. This stress also reduced the translocation of nitrogen from the vegetative store to seed. And the controlled environmental, we found heat stress during flowering significantly reduced the viability of pollen and there for the seed site. So we can consider some more strategies to alleviate heat and drought stress. First, PGR, or plant growth regulators, are substances in trace concentrations that can regulate the normal function of the plants. Classically, there are five kinds of PGRs, but there are also some substances such as jasmonic acid, melatonin, and others. These PGRs are like uh, lubricants to improve the internal microenvironment and uh, reduce the damage of heat and the drought, and therefore maintain the normal function of the plants. For example, application of melatonin to drought corn plants was found to increase leaf chlorophyll content and help the plant's quick recovery of leaf photosynthetic ray and drought stress. Similarly, on tomato plants, the research found the application of melatonin alleviated heat stress. Another strategy you can use is the micronutrients. As we know, under stress, the plant internal nutrients probably is imbalanced. Use of beneficial elements and micronutrients can rebalance nutrient components in stress the plants. These micronutrients act as catalysts or essential components of catalysts for the biosynthesis of osmotic adjustment substance. Therefore, enhance plant tolerance to heat and drought stress. For example, research found foliar application of selenium or silica can increase cutting yield by as much as 24%. This was because selenium altered source sink relations and enhanced the remobilization of nutrients and the biomass between plant components. In a brief summary, our preliminary analysis shows that canola hybrids required an average of 170 kilograms per hectare of nitrogen as a mer to achieve 2.7 tons per hectare yield. Canola hybrids are able to produce 3.5 tons per hectare yield. Split nitrogen strategy produced similar to or higher yield with higher nitrogen use efficiency than pre-planned nitrogen. This strategy also provided the opportunity to eliminate over nitrogen supply and reduce the cost when heat or drought occurs. Canola following weight required a smaller mirror and produced a higher yield than intensive canola monoculture. In the next step, 
we plan to use machine learning methods that was developed in another project to determine environment specific grammar for process matching recommendations. In the future, we would like to develop new projects and new solutions, such as the use of PGR and the balanced nutrient supply to mitigate the heat to the stress for improving canola net use efficiency, yield, and the producer's profitability. I would like to take this opportunity to thank Canola Council of Canada, who provided a partial financial support and led the project. And we also like to thank many collaborators across other AFC center and the universities and their technical staff and the students who participated in this CAP project. Thank you very much. <laughs>